Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be looking at a new server that I've just gotten here at my playhouse um, today has been scorching hot which means that the data center is pretty warm so I'm gonna keep this as short as possible and just give you an um, a bit of an overview of this server that has just dropped in um, it's right here kind of can't see anything yet but this is the awesome IBM slash Lenovo X3650 Model 4 but it's a special version of the Model 4 so um, let's go to the table ish and see what we have it's the Model 4 but with room for hard drives three and a half inch hard drives that is this is the first server that is available with these since the X3650 model 1 which normally came or at least the ones that I've seen normally came with three and a half inch hard drives let's uh, look at them in the rack up here we have some model 1s and they have these hard drives and these are three and a half inch hard drives uh, the server was available with two and a half inch hard drives um, I don't have any of those but they were available then came the model 2 which we have here the model 2 was only available with two and a half inch hard drives so all of my model 2 of course has two and a half inch hard drives then came the model 3 which were also only available with 2.5 inch hard drives you might think why did they go back to having three and a half inch hard drives i'm guessing that it's because of the capacity of two and a half inch hard drives is just not as great as when you can put three and a half inch hard drives in your server these are three terabyte drives that is in the server very nice three terabytes 7200 six gigabit sas drives awesome and um, well this server has six of them um, as far as i know the model 4 only came with these six drives in the front if you wanted more it was a different model number and it wasn't the m4 anymore it was another one you could get one with i think 12 is the maximum um, but as you can see there's a lot of wasted space here um, you could only fit three more over here yeah there's not that much waste actually but i think they wasted too much space in the front of the server to fit 12 drives in here so it's a little bit special with these three and a half inch hard drives so otherwise let's just have an overview of the server front here can just start with this one over here this is the m4 this is actually my production server that's the one that is always on right now i'm folding at home still so um, i have a few more on but this one is is the one my 24 7 server and this has 2.5 inch hard drive it's actually full of of those drives and i really should clean up because these are all 500 gigabyte drives and well they they are a bit i could consolidate that you know so slightly down here i have another one we put a graphics card in that and that is a rocking folding at home as well so yeah um, i have two m4s already now i have another m4 with another hard drive type in it so uh, that is cool but it has kind of the same thing on the front over here it has the model number and this is the 7915 and um, c4g is one of the few models that has 3.5 inch hard drives on the front then there's uh, we already saw that there is six drives here and it goes zero one two three four five so um zero uh, i don't like this way of counting i don't really enjoy when they include number zero it's it's a weird one so um yeah otherwise we have we have a vga connection always nice to have that on the front we have two usb two ports awesome then we have the we have the light path diagnostics that you can pull out and it will show you if there's anything wrong with the server and remind you if um, well if there was something wrong so uh, yeah and all the codes here are on the inside of the led and tells you what NMI is or over spec 
um, you don't have to know that. You can always Google it, but it's also on the inside of the server left. And we might just go see that. Then this server does not have the CD-ROM drive, but there is room for the CD-ROM drive here. Down here, there is room for a tape drive. And I see that I have stuck some, um, some fillers in here, so that if uh, some of the hard drives should be uh, replaced, well, I would have the fillers for it. So that is awesome. Good thinking, Morten. You're such a genius. Thank you, thank you. Way too, way too nice. Thank you. So let's pop those back in there. Very nice to have around. So let's uh, turn around see the back. On the back we have some PCI Express ports. I can see that there is only one riser card in here. The other one is not occupied. Which probably means that it only has one CPU. And that is also what I remember it only having one CPU. And over here first we have four network connections. Network 1, 2, 3, 4 and the IMM2 adapter here. Then we have the VGA connection on the back. We have a serial connection. I almost never use those. Then we have some um, LEDs hidden away in here. We have the power LED, the light tower and the exclamation mark for if there's something wrong. We have a special port here for more network connections. Uh, five and six can go in a slot here. A uh, daughter board on the, on the motherboard. And then we have four USB 2 connections over here. And a redundant power supply solution. We have two power supplies, 550 watts, good old well, 80 plus platinum power supplies. Awesome. Good redundant solution. Very nice and steady server. So um, let's uh, let's check it out inside. Uh -huh. See what this server brings. Let's try and open up Sesame. There we are. There is a lot of good stuff in here. Let's check the riser card first and see what we have. We have the usual suspect here. We have uh, three X16 PCI Express 3 ports, but each of them is only 841. So these are not real X16. So not optimal for like graphics card. It's a bit of a shame. I have quite enough of these. I rather want the one with the X16. Then we have the new stuff over here. We have this backplane for the three and a half inch hard drives, which is different from what we're used to. We usually have those backplanes like this for uh, two and a half inch hard drives um, that, that goes in here. And this backplane is, is all the way, so it's full size and it's not separated. And we, we have the normal big beefy coolers, so. Very nice. Um, as there is only one CPU in here, we can also see the second riser card over here. There's still plastic over that. So um, there is a blank because when the second CPU is not installed, you put in a blank. You don't need that much airflow when that's the case. We have some cabling here, uh, power for the hard drives. These probably use a fair amount of power. It's a big beefy connector that goes down here. I am not sure that is the same on the other one. I really don't remember. See that beefy connector down there for the hard drives? That's, um, that's a big one. Let's see if we can get this plastic out of the way. So this uh, machine has been used as a kind of a storage server, so there's not much in it. The, the drives in front of it was the main purpose of it. So it has a smaller CPU and it only has two blocks of memory down here and they are fairly small. A, a small storage server, six times three terabytes, so like 18 terabytes of data that it has been managing. Here is the LED of the server and actually what I wanted to show you was the light path diagnostics. Um, it tells you what the different stuff is on the light path diagnostics and um, if it lights up, recommended action and so on. Also very important for this server is the RAM configuration. There is a RAM configuration if there's one CPU and there is a RAM configuration if there is two CPUs. So otherwise uh, changing fans, power supplies, overview of the system board down here, all good stuff. Oh, common replacement parts if you should ever need anything. These uh, IBM slash Lenovo numbers out here are very good for eBay searches. 
or if you should happen to buy something at bargain hardware oh let's wait for the for the end so this server has a very nice built-in ray controller on the system board and it is um, it's getting a little more boost from this cache controller down here which I have done videos on it's a little extension board that you put in it um, it has some cache and it also often enables like RAID 5, RAID 6 and other high-end features like flash caching, I forget. But it also has a battery and that battery runs up here and goes into this plastic thing and it lives right there. There's the battery. Plus some extra battery cable. Very nice of them to put that in there. Cool. I forget what CPU is in here. I think we need to check that. So let's just pop that out of there. There, original. You can kind of see if it's original. If there is these little um, squares here, I don't know if you, if we focus on that. But well, this is original cooling compound. So I'll get rid of that. Okay. So here is the CPU. Um, you are seeing it sideways, but you can clearly see that this is an Intel Xeon E5 26. 40 version 2. So this is an 8 core CPU. It uh, well it says 2.0 gigahertz uh, normal speed. It can turbo boost up to 2.5 gigahertz and it has a TDP of 95 watts. So it's a it's a fairly good CPU for for being a storage server. To support that we have two blocks of memory. I believe this is 8 gigabytes, yes. 8 gigabyte DDR3 RAM, 12,800 R. I believe this is about 1,600 megahertz. Uh, so uh, yeah, and uh, according to the LED, that was supposed to be in slot number one and slot number four, and that looks great, no problem there. So I think we should put some new cooling compound on here, uh, some fresh stuff. And this CPU cooler is the one that is rated for uh, 95 watts. If you need more than that, they have one that is made of copper and can do some more wattage. So uh, let's pop that back in. And I think we'll just put that in and we'll see if it spreads that well enough. Yeah, it's spread all over the place, cool. There we are, nice. This is the first server that that I had that was really good to put in a graphics card. I had the M3 and the M2 where it is possible to put in a graphics card, but they weren't really done very well. There were the, the unicorn of riser cards available for them. They have one with an X16, but it, it was so rare that, um, well, it's almost impossible to find it. Um, but in this one, they actually put in X16 slots, so you can put graphics cards in here. There is a little bit of a problem with um, not enough wattage in these, but maybe they have fixed it in here. They don't actually say how many watts are available here, but the normal thing is that if it's an X8, then you have 25 watts. If you have an X16, you have 75 watts. So uh, there's a 50 watt difference. I am not sure what the wattage are on these. That would be interesting to try sometime. But this is the first server where it was easy to put in a graphics card. And also we had eight pin connections for power. We have one here and we have another one up here. Also an eight pin connection and it is possible to pull a cable through here and, and give power to the GPU. Up here we have room for a USB. Uh, bootable internal USB port. Um, now there is no CD-ROM drive so there is actually an available SATA and power connection down here for a CD-ROM drive plus another USB port here which is meant for like a tape drive in the front of the server. That was the hole where I put in the fillers. That is often used for a tape drive. So let's um, start putting this back together. There, that wasn't hard at all. So, have we forgotten anything interesting here? Better view of this cache extension card down here. 
it kind of plugs into the system board and, and gives you more options. So that is cool, but the, the rate controller is on the system board, but this card gives it more functions. So yeah, there's another port here available. That was uh, network card number five and six. And for that, you can get a 10 gigabit card that you can pop in here and give the server a 10 gigabit network option. I have that in one of my servers. So is the M4 worth to get? Yes, it is. If you can find the M4 as a, at a reasonable price, definitely get it. It's a great server. And it uses the E5 2600 series CPUs and it will run with the version one and the version two. It will not run with three and four. If you want those, you need the Model 5, which is still blotchy expensive. M4 you can get you can get for reasonable amount of money. If you want to go cheaper than that, there is the M2 and the M3. Not much different between those two servers, uh, but they um, they kind of use the Intel Xeon X5600 series of CPUs and uh, also the 5500s series of CPU. The M2 has some limitations. It can only do a TDP up to 95 watts, which means that the top CPU for the awesome Lenovo X3650 Model 2 is the Intel Xeon X5675, which is a 6-core 3.06 GHz CPU. Definitely, if you come across an M4, at a reasonable price but I would say three four hundred dollars is a very good price for that server if you find anything cheaper than that well it's a bargain and talking about that check out bargain hardware over at bargainhardware.co.uk where you can get a bargain on your hardware purchases if you check out buy anything there and check out with the promo code my playhouse small letters you get five percent off of your purchase and they have a lot of good stuff and they have really good customer service so quick little video it's august not as many of you are watching videos i am very busy recording a feature film so i'm trying to uh, keep the videos a little bit short sorry about that hope i can still make them ever so slightly entertaining if you thought so please give it a thumbs up in the thingy below and hit the bell thing and you know check out my store as well so i can get more room in here <laughs> so but thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye Ow.